So the left has a rich tradition of fighting like petulant children in the face of overwhelming odds. In fact, I think it might be that leftists are best at fighting other leftists. In fact, if you go on Marxist.org, you will discover that for hundreds of years, left-leaning people have literally written letters and published articles shit-talking each other in public. I mean, there are literal articles written by the founding members of some of these ideologies that are just like, oh, I fucking, oh, I fucking hate Carl. He's such a piece of shit. Yeah, well, Vlad, oh yeah, Vlad, guess what? He doesn't wipe his ass. He doesn't shower. He showers once a week. This dude smells like shit. Did you know? I'm not kidding you. Did you know that uh, Vladimir <laughs> Lenin's roommate and best friend used to complain because he would get he would come up to his roommate's room at 2 a.m. and pace back and forth ranting about capitalism while his friend was trying to sleep. That's Lenin. His friend shit talked him because he was like, dude, go to bed. Enough with the capitalism. Yeah, they just fucking listen. Lefties love fighting with each other, okay? However, most lefties are smart enough to know when it's time to pack it up, okay? It's most lefties know, all right, dude, okay, let's put aside our differences and let's fix the fucking problem. We can agree on the basics. Sure, we might not agree on the exact way to correctly organize an organization. Hey, thank you very much, C-Corp. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, and, but most lefties do know when to stop, but some really do not. Okay. And I, when I say some don't, some really, really don't. Okay. Like, holy shit. Okay. Some really don't know when to pack it up. And most of the time. Lefty infighting actually is somewhat beneficial, right? Because one of the, look, notice this. One of the things that we do on here all the time is we argue. We argue all the time. How many times do I argue with you? How many of you have come on my stream to argue with me? Sometimes we argue about memes. Sometimes we argue about politics. We argue all the time. And you know what that does? That makes us smarter. See, I am a believer in the power of debate. I genuinely believe that debate makes us stronger. But debate is not the same thing as actively fucking one another up. Okay? Like, I'm also a believer in the power of Debussy. Indeed. I am indeed, Grimedango. So, we... I Look, listen, listen. I, I grew up... <laughs> I grew up in a family that loves to argue, okay? Now my family, they didn't just keep it at arguing, but every, it was a holiday tradition in my family, and I kid you not, to argue at every family meeting about politics, like about uh, fucking all over the place, just the stupidest shit you can imagine. It was a tradition, we looked forward to it. And I know there's other people out there. You come from a Jewish family, you probably have a similar background to me. Now my family wasn't Jewish. But, I think you know what I'm talking about, yeah? Arguing is valuable. But you know what's not valuable? Fucking each other up really hardcore and making genuine schisms over stupid nonsense. Now that shit, now that shit drives me nuts, okay? That shit drives me fucking nuts okay and we have a couple of things we're going to be talking about with regard to this because i know you you come in and i say this every time when you walk into one of my streams and i say there's going to be drama you know i'm not bringing you fucking air puffed drama yeah i'm bringing you primo maximum cringe maximum drama drama okay and that's what we've got going on today now, some of you may remember that we've had some drama with a couple of P 
people that I'm going to be talking about today. One of them recently, oh, this is very, oh, this is very ethically sourced drama. This is drama handpicked by mama. 100% ethical picked by me, myself, okay? Now, you all might know that just the other day, a this this tiny streamer by the name of Vaush managed to raise just about $300,000 for a charity known as the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, okay? Now, I mentioned this already, but since we've got a lot of eyes on this right now, welcome, have a seat, join the site chat, and make sure that you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel where all my videos go. If you're here, you're going to love my videos, I promise, okay? I promise. Um, Hey, cool. Wow, welcome back, MS Sloth, okay? Let me just talk about that. Oh, just just be patient. Be patient. I'll, I'll get you there, Dr. Mantis Toboggan. I'll get you. Just get comfy. I'm going to take you on a journey. Okay? I promise. I'm not going to I'm not going to lead you astray. So, why thank you, Blablado. You've provided me with the link that I provided to everyone else. Why thank you. You do realize it was me. I literally went on Vosh's stream and plugged this. But we're going to go over it together, okay? Listen, you all just have no faith in me. Get comfy. You have now provided the link back to me that I provided to Vosh and his community. But that's okay. That's all right. I appreciate it nonetheless, okay? It was I, Demon Mama, all along, indeed, okay? So let's take a look at this. This is a website called Charity Navigator, okay? Charity Navigator is... A tool that you should bookmark right now, if you care about changing the world, you should go and you should bookmark Charity Navigator, okay? And I'm going to tell you why you should bookmark it, okay? Because Charity Navigator is a charity watchdog and aggregator. So what it does is they go in and they gather information about every charity they possibly can. And then they investigate it. They get all of their info, all of their phone numbers, who's in charge of it, everything. They get a ton of info and then they rate it on a, on a, on a very, very complex rating scale that is very well respected. And they rate it in different ways. They rate it both financially based on accountability and transparency, and then they give an overall score. Now, the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund, which Vosh raised $300,000 for. Hey, Comrade Courtney, get comfy. Happy to have you here. Welcome, welcome our new imp, Comrade Courtney. Welcome. <sighs> to the Palestinian Children's Relief Fund. And I just want to point out, before we get into any of the claims that we will see today, because we're going to see a lot of claims today. We're going to see a lot of claims today, okay? We're going to look at the facts first. Oh, shit! That's right, Demon Mama bringing you the dessert first, okay? Look at that. I'm so kind. I let you have the sweets before dinner. What type of mama lets you do that? A mama who knows. A mama who knows that occasionally we need the sweets first. So let's look at the sweets, shall we? Palesti the Palestine Children's Relief Fund is has a goal of identifying and treating every child in the Middle East in need of specialized surgery. That is a lofty goal, indeed. Well, how do they live up to such a lofty goal? Well, as it turns out, fucking goddamn well. This charity has a 91.16 overall score from Charity Navigator, a four-star rating, which, by the way, to get a five-star, you need to have 100%, and they have a 100% in accountability and transparency. This is a very rare score to see, okay? 100% on accountability and transparency. That is, that means, how rare are high ratings? Very rare, okay? Getting a 100% in accountability is very rare. And now I know this because I've, I have I used to be really into, into charity stuff in the past and researching charities, and I used to do this all the time. I think that like, as far as 
accountability and transparency real quick let's just out of curiosity let's do this there we go let me just pop on over and let's look up doctors without borders one of the most hey why why did it do that here we go let's look up doctors without borders real quick ready doctors without borders one of the most famous famously high rated charities in the world okay doctors without borders Doctors Without Borders doesn't even have a 100% score. Doctors Without Borders has a 97%. And this is one of the most famous, the world famous for being a transparent and well and well rated doc, uh, like, uh, like charity. This is, Doctors Without Borders is like the gold standard for charities. And they don't even have a 100%. Let's look up Autism Speak. Sure, let's look up a few. Autism Speaks. Ooh. Ooh. Damn. Well, they're pretty good on transparency, but their financials are not so good. They've only got a two-star in financials and an 83 over, over overall. Now, keep in mind, this website does not score the ideological goals of any charity. They only score their financial structure and their accountability and transparency. Dylan, Dylan, thank you so very much. Dylan, I am so unbelievably, I hope you're here listening. Dylan, just so you know, I love you as a friend. I hope you know that. And I mean that. I really care about you. I am so fucking happy that you're out of the ward now and you're doing well. I'm very, very proud of you. And my community is unbelievably proud of you. So all you Dylan Raiders, come get comfy, okay? Come on in and get comfy. Come over to the website demonmama.com forward slash live where we have all of these amazing emotes we even have a dylan pet emote on our website you can pet dylan's head with your hand with your digital hand so consider coming on over and hanging out and if you're just coming here click on through to the youtube page and like the stream okay and we're about to get into some real juicy goodness okay so you've come in at a very very good time you all are here to have me show you why every fucking take that you've heard about charity in the last three days is totally bullshit. And I mean, just straight up out talking out of their ass. So if you're, if you're feeling the taste for some blood, some drama, you want the taste on your lips of drama, you come on in and get comfy because we have a lot to talk about and we just started. You came at the perfect time, okay? So there we go. Are there any charities with a 100% score? I believe there are, in fact. Let's take a look at the charities with perfect scores. Charities with perfect scores. ProPublica. Imagine Children's Museum. The Timkin Museum of Art. The Equal Justice Imi Initiative. The FSF, the Free Software Foundation. The Freedom from L Religion Foundation. Truth for Life. Uh, there's see there's quite a few there's quite a few but nonetheless of all of the charities in the world this is what like maybe 30 of all of the thousands of charities in the world there are maybe what let's ballpark it at 30 wow that's kind of wild whoa Programmer Paul with the 20 gifted subs. Why did that message not come through? Thank you so very, very much for the 20 gifted subs for supporting this show so that I can bring you banging content three days a week, four days when I do video game streams. You make that possible. This show is viewer supported and always will be. It will always be free. It will always be viewer supported. That's right. You make this show possible. And guess what? This show is about to get even better. Because I have a big upgrade coming for next Monday. So, get comfy. How is Salvation Army? Let's take a look. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me just catch everybody up. Let me just tell you real quick, okay? Listen. All of you newcomers who just came here, we are talking about right now about charity. And we are talking about whether charity is liberal or not. Whether charity is bad or not. And we are specifically 
teaching you. That's right. You will walk away from this fucking stream knowing better how to decide whether a charity is good or bad. And I'm going to show you how. So let me just start over real quick with one quick thing. This website right here, if you're listening right now and you can hear my voice, I know you can, bookmark this website, Charity Navigator, your guide to intelligent giving. Charity Navigator is a highly, highly respected charity watchdog. What they do is they investigate charities and they find out how charities use their money they find out who runs the charity and where the money goes they make no judgments on the ideological goals of any charity but they do judge how well the charity is run and how well they use their money so bookmark charity navigator because in the future when you want to know whether you want to donate to a charity or not you can actually go here and you can find good charities it is a tool of unbelievable levels. So fucking bookmark it. Seriously, keep this page. It's helped me a million times. Okay? A million times. You're going to hate me. All charity is egotistical. Alt altruism is really just selfishness to me. You're wrong, and I'm going to show you why you're wrong. You're you're very wrong, and I'm going to show you why you're wrong. Okay? I'm going to show you why you're dead motherfucking wrong. Don't worry. Just sit around, and I'll show you. All right. So where were we? We were talking about the Palestine Children's Relief Fund, a fun, a, a charity which a very, very, a tiny, tiny little streamer by the name of Vosh recently donated about $300,000 towards, okay? And we were pointing out the fact that this charity has a 91.16 over, overall rating and a 100% score in accountability and transparency. That's pretty goddamn amazing. Okay? That's pretty fucking amazing. And I haven't told you why we're talking about this yet, but you're going to find out. And some of you might already know. I know some of you already know. But let's take a look at this, okay? Let's keep going. So here you have their financial score graphed with their accountability and transparency score. They're in the top quadrant. That's fucking incredible. Here's their financial performance me metrics. This is where, this is really important. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to read this. Right here, it tells you some of the problematic things. So for example, you can see, wow, their administrative expenses are 4.7%, which is good. This means that their CEO, the guy who was on Vosh's stream, that the guy who's right over here, Steve Sosaby, takes b very little. That means everybody involved, all of the employees, aren't, aren't scooping up a bunch of money for themselves. Now, there are some charities, like, for example, we can talk about Komen. We want to look up Susan G. Komen for the cure. You will discover that other charities do not have such high ratings. In their finances, you'll notice t double, more than double, 10% of this charity's money goes just to the administration. And f almost 13% goes to just raising more money. And liabilities to assets is very high. So they have debts. Let's look up the Red Cross, sure. Let's look up Red Cross. The American Red Cross, damn, three stars. Actually, not horrible, but let's take a look. Red Cross, actually very good on the administrative expenses. A little bit high on the fundraising expenses. Very high on the liabilities to assets. 52%, that means they are in a lot of debt. They're spending a lot of money on debt. Launcher, that's perfectly fine. Show will always be free. You support it. Let's look up the Trump Foundation. We're having fun. See, this is fun. The Trump Foundation. Uh-oh. 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 High Concern Advisory. This has a, a warning on it. That's how bad it is. High Concern Advisory. Look at all of... And it, they cite it. When they have problems with a charity, they cite all of the articles. Look, article after article. Each one of these is a citation to an independent article. Bam, bam. Owned. Just horrible. They also provide publicly available IRS forms. 
which there aren't many for the Donald J. Trump one. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. So you've got the idea here. You've got the fucking idea. Yeah, they don't, they don't judge them based on ideology. They're very careful about that. Okay. Let's continue. They don't, ba they don't judge based on ideology. Seriously. They're, they're very, very good about that. Okay. So let's continue. As you can see, you can see the breakdown of their expenses. You can go and you can click over here and you can look directly at their IRS forms. Bam! Look at all of this. All of the info that you could ever want to know about them. All of their 990 forms, all of their tax reports available. Their CEO and board leadership is all available. In addition, they have this down here. This is the accountability and transparency metrics. Independent voting board members, no material division, diversion of assets, audited financials prepared by an independent accountant. As you can see, this group, Charity Navigator, does their fucking homework. That mean, What this means here is that they have independent people do their finances. So there's no secrecy. They don't provide loans or they don't receive loans from, from related parties. Documents, board meeting minutes, provided copies. Conflict of interest policy in place, whistleblower policy in, in place, record retention and destruction property for privacy in place. CEO is listed with their salary in place. So quite a lot of amazing stuff. Super, super amazing stuff. And as you can see, you can see what their last uh, reported year was. Their contributions, they gave, uh, sorry, their contributions that they got was $5 million dollars. That's pretty incre incredible. By the way, they just added to that $300,000 for this coming year. And keep in mind, they've been very open about the fact they haven't been getting as much money. And here they have their expenses all listed, what they had to expend, blah, blah, blah. You can see graphs, helpful graphs. Just the information is amazing. Look at this. You can even see how much president and CEO Steve Sosabee makes. He makes $160,000. Well, that's pretty comfortable. That's a pretty comfortable rate, but that's pretty good for a charity. This guy is the leader of a massive charity and he only takes 160 k That's a little high, but it's not bad. And you can see other ones that are way worse. You know that there's charities that don't tell you how much they pay their CEO? Did you know that? Yikes. Yep. And you can see other similar charities. And they work openly with Charity Navigator. Do they have Clinton Foundation? Sure. Let's look up Clinton Foundation. I know y'all are obsessed with the Clinton Foundation, okay? <sighs> Clinton Foundation. Uh-oh. 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 Only, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, hey, they're very transparent, actually. Hey, that's good. Credit where credit is due. 100% transparency. That's actually pretty good. They're lower than this one, but hey, that's pretty good. Take a look at this, though. Almost 20% of their, of their, uh, of their expenses go towards administrative expenses. Uh-oh. Oof. That's a lot. They're paying out a lot to their uh, to their people at the top. Looks like this one hasn't been rated. Yeah, this one doesn't have a rating. Probably too new. Yep. Looks like this one they don't have enough info on, unfortunately. Make a wish? Sure. That my website is not a charitable. Let's see. Let's find out. Ooh, make a wish America. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Two stars. 69.98 financial. Ooh. Oh no. Lots of debt. High fundraising expenses and very high, and high administrative expenses. Again, for the record, the charity we're talking about today, the PCRF, four point four, blech, four point four percent. Okay, is PETA on here? Let's check out. Let's check it out. Let's see. 
We'll do one more. I'm not doing any more after this one. People for the ethical... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oof. Bad on transparency. Bad on financials. Two-star rating. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, a lot of debt. They don't have independent voting board members. Ooh, yucky. Ooh, they don't have a privacy policy available. Ooh, ooh, oh, yuck. Oof. Yikers. So not so great. Not so great. We already looked up Autism Speaks. They're not, they're not great, but they're not horrible. Remember, this charity, this website does not judge the ideology of the charity. Just the financials and the transparency. Okay? All right. So there was the dessert. You got the dessert first. I'm not checking anymore. We got, we got it. We got the picture. Thank you, I raid God. Appreciate that. We just did the Clintons. Yep. All right. Y'all can look these up on your, on your own if you want to. Okay. Now, what does a good, what does a good score look like? The average range for it is a good judge of what to look for. They have lists on here. You can in investigate all of that on your own time. Look here, watch, look, I'm just going to show you. You can go look, they've got lists. They've got hot topics. They have a guide for do for being a donor so you can effectively use your money. This website is very serious about making charity the best that it can be. Okay. So now we're going to get to the good stuff. Okay. I know I joked the real dessert is coming right now. Okay. We got to talk about some stuff. Okay. What's the site called? Charity Navigator. Charity Navigator. Yep. Have fun. I learned a lot from it. I have a bunch of lists of charities that I want, that I give to that I found using that website. Super great. Charity Navigator. We could even make a command if we want to. I think it's great. But let's talk about what happened on Twitter, okay? Because we haven't even begun to dig into this properly quite yet. Hey, thank you so very much, Intrepid Elm. Very happy to have you here. And thank you very much for the Tier 1 site sub. Really appreciate that. So let's take a look. I saw this nice little tweet by Sansol, another streamer some of you may be familiar with, who tweeted, Why are people mad that Vosh is donating to, a pal to Palestinian charities? Now, for complete transparency, because, you know, we're talking about transparency here, okay? I donated and contributed to this fundraising effort. I appeared on Vosh's show. We had a command on my website that specifically directed people to go donate to the charity while it was running. And I gave money to this charity via Vosh. So there's the, there's the transparency. I think this is good. So you know where a little bit where I'm coming from here, just so you understand what I'm talking about. How much did I donate? $200, which for me is quite a lot. And my chat can verify that because I did it publicly because I wanted to encourage other people to go donate. And guess what? They did. They did. Cool. Okay. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. 100% transparency rating. Indeed. So here we go. Why are people mad that Vosh is donating to Palestinian charities? Why is this blowing up? Oh, bad choice in words. Bad choice in words. Oof. Oof. Did his charity drive do really well? Yes, it did. It did do really well. It did do really, really well. And I responded to this tweet with my broad opinion, okay? Because they're small-minded, vindictive, and interested in Twitter clout than actually making real change. For the record, the charity that Vosh chose is phenomenally well-respected by charity watchdogs. See for yourself, they do incredible work. Hey, thank you for the uh, YouTube's, uh, YouTube uh, membership, Andre. Really appreciate having you here. Thank you. Okay. So here I linked it so that people could go investigate for themselves. And a, a, a very specific person that we have had a couple run-ins with on this channel decided to chime in. Now, many of you who are 
here right now will already know about Mel, okay? And I don't like to talk about Mel a lot because in my opinion, Mel has increasingly, well, Mel and I, like a year ago, used to be friends. Mel has become increasingly toxic online and has gotten to the point where I legitimately don't know what her goal is anymore, okay? Dr. Heem sent this link, okay? I'll take a look real quick. Thank you. I got to open up Twitch chat. I'll take a look at this in a minute, okay? This is why I hate the concept of charity in a way. Political armchair dorks can say really sus stuff about the global south while appearing as heroes for raising money for Palestine. It just feels really off, but whatever. I just hope the money goes to those kids. To which I responded, says the person whose only political engagement is getting high and typing into a corporate internet box. Please, please fuck off, you selfish poser. You aren't building anything. You tear down because you're a coward, unwilling to commit to real change. A heckler. Okay? Oh, kind of harsh, but deserved in my opinion. But this wasn't the last of it, okay? This wasn't the last of it. Because as it turns out, a lot of other people um, had problems. PCR, oh, Aristocracy says, yeah, I had a lot of criticisms for some of the other charities people have raised for, since Hamas is known to use some specific charities as a front for their funding, but the PCRF is legit and even accepted in Israel. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brim15. Appreciate that, and thank you for, for, uh, telling me that, Arist. Um, Oh, are we watching the mic clip? <laughs> oh, yes, we are watching the mic clip. How could you have predicted that we would be watching the mic from PA clip? Because I saw this mic from PA clip, and I gotta say, you know, this has gotta be one of the funniest things. But you know what? I'm gonna let the clip speak for itself, okay? I'm gonna let this speak for one itself, okay? One thing about chair. Hold on, just a minute. Let's listen to the words of Mike from Mike from Mike, okay? Now, some of you will know that I have roasted Mike pretty hard in the, fa in the past. Now, I don't personally explicitly hate Mike from PA or anything like that. I just think that Mike from PA is so spiteful and that he will basically double down on any position to the detriment of himself and the greater left just to get a, a, a point in. And I think this is one of the examples of somebody, you know, essentially going into the position where they are willing to do damage to good things simply because they're bitter. Okay? That's what it seems like to me. It really, really does seem like that to me. Okay? I'm going to move the chat over here for just a minute because I want us to be able to see every little bit of this. Okay? Enjoy your new position, chat. Have fun being on the other side of the screen for once. Okay? The Scranton Strangler himself. Okay? Now, once again, I am asking you. Oh, Marcy. Marcy, we'll be able to talk shortly. Okay? I, I didn't, I thought this would take a little bit shorter, but uh, it's going to be a little bit. As long as you're good, I'll be able to have you on. Are you still good for that, Marcy? I'm sorry. I've been all over the place this week. I've been so bad. I'm so sorry, Marcy. But I still want to have you on if you're willing. When is your show? Listen, we'll make it happen, okay? We'll make it happen. Don't worry. We'll make it happen. Okay. Sorry, Marcy. I've been so bad. Um, my brain is, like, all over the place. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> let's listen to the clip. And before you judge, Mike, I always say this. Please, reserve your judgment until after the take, okay? Just wait until after the take because you will be able to roast him if the take is bad. And I'm telling you right now, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't color your judgment. Let's just listen. One thing about charity streams and things like that um, is they're self-promotion vehicles primarily. Um, and I don't like that. A real charity stream would be either somebody who doesn't stream often streaming just for the purpose of doing the charity stream or streaming on someone else's channel hopefully to in order to support that organization you know that would be a true charity stream but a lot of these charity streams 
are self-aggrandizing fests where you get a bunch of people to raid into you out of solidarity for the charity you promote yourself you 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 virtue signal as if you are um a good person and um a lot of the money that gets to, goes to charities goes toward the executive director the finance director the fundraising machinery uh, now do you see why we had dessert first do you see now why we had dessert first and so as a leftist i find most charities to be highly problematic and don't like the liberal mentality of philanthropy. Thank you very much. Radical um, authenticity. That's Appreciate just that. That's not something that I like to do myself because I feel like it's disgusting. Like it is profiting off of other people's misery. Um, and it's bad. Um, um, and so I'm not saying nobody should do charity streams or that charity streams are 100% toxic or anything like that. It's just when you come to this channel, this is not a liberal channel, okay? I need you to understand that because I'm going to challenge a lot of your liberal assumptions and I need you to know that. And charity is liberal. Charity puts the charity giver in a position of power over the person receiving the charity. Charity is not is not something that's revolutionary. Charity is something that supports the status quo. Um, it doesn't mean that all charity is bad or we should never have mutual aid. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that most of the time, I am not interested in that as an axis of action um charity is liberal meaning charity equals bad no no uh american charities have collapsed the entire markets by flooding one product haiti as an example was flooded with rice to the point that their local agriculture collapsed um and i know that Mutual aid is something that's very different than from charity because mutual aid is about building a power structure. Okay? About building a power structure among equals. Um, at the moment, I do think these widespread charity drives for Palestine are helping change the narrative, helping to widen the Overton window. I think that's true for sure. Um, I think that's true for sure. Uh... So, you know, which is why I, which is why I've participated in them, donated and, um, supported, for example, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Chapo's. Like Chapo's charity stream Chapo's was good charity. because the Chapo boys don't stream on the Chapo uh, Twitch what? stream. What? I'm like, sorry. Not, hold on. I was not, supposed to hold off. I was supposed to hold off. brand, really. I was supposed to hold off. Um, make their podcast their friends play Fortnite on the chapo stream you know it's that's not what it's for it's for you know they came on there for that it's not it wasn't just some sort of cash grab one thing oh boy oh god i couldn't listen this is one of the worst takes i have seen in so long like on it is fractally bad it is just fractally bad not only does he shoot his own argument in the foot he literally builds backwards from his premise he instantly gets called out by his own chat during the take for being a hypocrite on it and he also just says some patent nonsense mike what is a mutual aid does anybody know what a mutual aid is this is why you never trust somebody who's got red and black central committee tanks in chat to talk about anarchist concepts 
Mutual aid is literally the most basic idea you can imagine. It is the idea of two people helping each other mutually. It has nothing to do with how you go about doing that. It is a very simple concept. It is the idea that humans, that is in humans, mutual interest to work together. That is why it is called mutual aid. And it is the center point for many, many of humans' social relations. And anybody who even knew a, knew a tiny bit about mutual aid and the concepts behind it would be able to tell you that. Would be able to tell you that mutual aid isn't some magical word for when you build something special. Mutual aid is the concept that drives that theoretically drives human society. It is the idea that humans help each other and that is why we build societies. Charity is a form of mutual aid. And here's another thing. Oh, God, there's just so much. There's just so goddamn much to talk about with this fucking take. <sighs> True, Coxon. Thank you very much for the $5, okay? Charity is not in and of itself some sort of uniquely evil power imbalance. That is one of the strangest ways I've ever seen anybody try to... to communicate charity sorry charity is liberal let me just get this straight mike thinks that charity is liberal because apparently charity is actually about um is actually secretly about establishing a power imbalance between the person who's doing the charity and the person who isn't but but that power imbalance the con the that doesn't even make sense because the entire reason why you would need to do charity is because there already is a power imbalance. There already is a resource imbalance. What are you talking about? Charity is when you give something to somebody else to help them. That is a, it is a very broad concept. Charity is not like some sort of, again, like it feels like these, like he was desperately trying to be like, ah, yes, in the leftist law, the term charity refers to when liberals do things I do not like. Ah, yes, it's next to mutual aid when not liberals do cool things that I do like. No, these are broad terms that refer to many, many, many things. But we all know the real reason why Mike from PA is mad about charity right now. Come on, let's be real. We all know he doesn't like Vosh and he's mad that he can't raise money and get the attention. So let's tackle a couple other pieces, okay? Let's tackle, oh yeah, I think Vosh was way too nice to Mike in his response, but that's because Vosh is Vosh is, you know, doesn't want to come off like he's being fucking super defensive. And I get that. I get that. But I'm going to be not so nice. Okay? Because I don't got anything to lose on that front. Okay? So I'm not going to be nice. Okay? Vosh was very nice. Vosh was like, well, yeah, there's problems under under liberalism. And sure, we'll talk about that eventually. But not right now. Because let's be real. Mike was not bringing any sort of real criticism here. Mike was salty. Mike was mad that it's somebody else getting the attention and not him and it's really funny that he's that he's gonna go through all of this rigmarole sitting there and going oh charity is so bad because it's really just a self-promotion vehicle as he streams on his dsa socialists flower central committee debunking liberal crap oh join the tanky squad join the central committee as this guy makes his living selling himself as a representative of the revolution in America. A dude who sits in a shitty leather chair, sweating his ass off, getting mad at random other people on the internet, and acting like he's the biggest badass in the world. Now, it's really funny to me because, listen, let's be real. That's what I do. But there's no, there's no illusions about what I do. I am an angry demon bitch who yells into a microphone to entertain you and hopefully teach you some things. And guess what? I believe, as it turns out, that angry screaming microphone bitches can actually do some good in the world. I'm not here pretending to be the revolution. 
But Mike's main critique, and I want us to understand the logic behind this argument so that you don't think I'm just screaming, okay? Because I actually have a reason for this. Mike's main argument is that the reason he doesn't like charity is because it is used as a, as a matter of self-promotion. He says from his entire channel that is entirely studded in self-promotion. Every aspect of this thing, from the, from the little flowers of his branding to his greasy-ass iconic look to the number of subs he has advertised down here to his exclamation Discord, exclamation Twitter, exclamation YouTube, to everything, every single inch of his show is self-interested. It's self-promotion. And he's going to sit there and try and say that another streamer is bad for raising $300,000 for children because it's self-promotion. Are you motherfucking kidding me? That is hypocrisy to a level of stupidity. It is hypocrisy to a level of, it is, it, it was, it was, I saw this tweet and I couldn't stop myself from getting mad about it. And I knew I was gonna be talking about it today because holy shit. This is one of the worst takes I've ever seen. Now let's steal man Mike here. Let's say that Mike didn't make, it wasn't a stupid blistering hypocrite who has taken an opportunity to, to try and shove his own clout over the fact that $300,000 was raised by a disparate internet community to save the lives of children. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's right. You're going to have to hear it from me right now because I don't know, but real change was just made yesterday. I don't know if you all know this, but just in case you didn't, did you know that the PCRF's headquarters was blown up two days ago? That right before the, the, uh, the charity began, Israel blew up the headquarters in Palestine of the PCRF. I'm not kidding you. That actually happened just as the stream was beginning and i can show you the images of it because i have them saved somewhere here here it is let me just show you let me show you what actually happened this is the ceo verified ceo this is not some fake account i did all of my due diligence here this is when I was with some of the brave and noble PCRF staff in our office. Here's what it looked like before. This is what that room looks like now. As you can see, the, the entire floor of a concrete building has collapsed. This wall has collapsed. There are deep cracks in all of the walls. This building is done. This building is done for. This building will need to be destroyed and rebuilt. You cannot work or be in this building anymore. This happened this that happened the morning of the stream that vosh raid ra vosh's community raised and i should say not just vosh because vosh was the guy who was on screen which is really hard work and i respect that massively but vosh's community and i want you to think about that we talk about how we live in an age of atomization okay we talk all the time about how we live in an age where everyone's alienated and separated from each other. But through this stream, through the stream community, people were able to pool together $300,000 to help a charity whose headquarters looks like this right now. A charity that has a 100% transparency rating and a 91% financial usage rating. A charity that verifiably has given children M many children i'm talking hundreds of children over the last 30 years a shot at life children some of them children who would have died or lived in agony otherwise and they're on a, they're running on a budget their last successful year that we have reported was five million dollars vosh just raised three hundred thousand. i don't know if you noticed but that's a pretty huge chunk that's a massive amount of their money that's a third what, a third of a fifth? It's like a 15th of their total budget was raised by one stream? By disparate random internet people. Yeah, it was a lot of communities. It was, it was a ton of community efforts, okay? And to bring this back, to tie this back 
all back to what we were talking about. Just, you know, oh, it's liberal. Oh, it's uh, it's 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 charity. It's it's fucking charity. Yeah, that was fucking left unity. Everybody whines about left unity. Every motherfucker whines about left unity. And then when left unity happens, motherfuckers like Mike from PA, like the Scranton fucking strangler over here can't actually join in. And remember when I said earlier that the, that leftists have a long tradition of fighting with each other. Leftists love, oh, leftists are so good at fighting each other and it's actually good most of the time. But stuff like this is the type of stuff that I'm talking about when people are too dumb to realize when they're actually harming things. And when you spend a time on your stream talking to what, a couple thousand people telling them how stupid it is that uh, it's, it's just, there's no reason to give to charity. The, the money that's literally going to save the lives of children that has saved the lives of children. Children are alive now that wouldn't have lived if it wasn't for this charity. That is about the most real change that I can possibly imagine. That is real, material, actual change. And fucking motherfucker Mike over here Who I heard, I heard he fucked a frog, by the way. I heard motherfucker Mike fucked a frog. You know, Mike from PA thinks it's a bad idea. But we're not done yet because there's multiple, multiple ang- That was a joke. That was a, that was a, that was a joke. That's a joke. That's a reference to the angry video game nerd. It's, it's a joke. He didn't, he didn't fuck frog. It, it, it's a joke from the angry video game nerd. It's a reference. Jesus fucking Christ. You realize Mike is regularly raided by Sam Cedar? Yeah, that's because Sam Cedar doesn't engage in this type of stuff. Okay? Unless Pepe. Did I hear correct? The PCRF's headquarters was bombed. Yes, it was. The PCRF's headquarters in Palestine was bombed. We're not done with this segment isn't even done yet. We're not even we're not even near being done yet because there's a lot that was talked about here and we got to talk about all of it. So we've talked about why Mike is a hypocrite. That's the first part. But let's dissect his argument. OK, let's hear out the steel manned version of the argument. Let's pretend that Mike isn't the one making this critique. Let's pretend that it is a pure Catholic, a pure Catholic priest who does nothing but in the name of God. He gives all of his glory to God and takes none for himself. Would the critique that charity is a self-promotion effort and therefore it's bad still hold? You're very welcome. It's not a cookie. Thank you. Okay. Let's think about it. Is this true? Is it true? And the answer is, fuck no. Of course it isn't. Because think about this. Let's say, I want you to imagine for a second, and if you're already like a doctor or something, don't you worry. Don't, you don't, you don't have to imagine. You can just close your eyes. Okay. I want you to imagine that you are a skilled, years trained doctor, right? You spent the last 12 years of your life in medical school, and then you went on to be a, a very busy surgeon working long hours, specializing in whatever special surgery that you do. Now, barring a small chance, I'm going to guess that you being a doctor are probably very good at being a doctor. But you know what you might not be good at? Marketing. You know what else you might not be good at? Organizing. You know what else you might not be good at? You might not be good at broadcasting or video or social media. Wow. It's almost like if Mike knew a single thing about mutual aid, he would recognize that the idea of mutual aid shows that we have to help each other because we have different strengths. So it's interesting that Mike would have a problem with somebody like a broadcaster who has a massive audience like Vosh using that to drive a charity, to raise money for a charity, 
that is busy doing the work on the ground. You see, because doctors can't usually also be broadcasters. They're busy fixing children so they don't die. Weird how that works, right? As it turns out, doing heart surgery on babies takes a lot of time and effort. And you might not have the time to go around and do all this shit. And guess what? Even if you're not the doctor, even if you're running the actual charity itself, you're coordinating the doctors. Do you know what the... I mean, if you go and listen to Vosh's segment, let me just tell you. This charity does a lot of work. They, they organize meetings and waivers and money to fly children or to fly doctors overseas. In addition, in addition, they also have begun to bring doctors to places to train local doctors so that that so that it fixes the root problem. So that instead of just having a doctor come over and fix one problem, there will now be trained doctors in that area who can fix it. That's fucking wild. So as it turns out, people like C like Steve and the board of advisors for this charity need people like Vosh. And it isn't just self-promotion. And even if it was self-promotion, it is mutually beneficial self-promotion. What is so hard to understand about that? If, if you and your friend work together on a project, you might go and tell other people about that project. Because, and what, if your friend sat there and went, you're just promoting this because it's your project. Because you want to be famous. Dude, we're working on a project together, you fucking idiot. We both gain. There is nothing wrong with mutually growing. And by the way, $300,000 is absolutely mutual growth for this charity. That type of massive, and right now, right now, you're listening to me. You're learning about this charity. You're going to walk away from this stream, stream with a nugget in your brain knowing that, oh, wow, this cool charity exists. Maybe in the future, maybe next Christmas, I'll donate to this charity. You're, we're doing the word of mouth right now. We're making the charity able to do its work more. Like, yeah, in a small part, but it's the small parts that comes together to make something good. So there we go. Point number two. One, Mike is a hypocrite. Two, even if he wasn't a hypocrite, this argument sucks. Because just because somebody is also benefiting off of promoting the charity doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Because you can both gain. It's not a zero-sum game. So let's continue. Sorry, I need to take notes so I remember all of the points that I brought up in this video. Because there's so goddamn many. One, Mike is a hypocrite. Two, Mike's argument for self-promotion sucks. And we're going to do a 2A, no, 2B here. Because guess what? It really sucks. You know when he goes on? Let's just listen back to it real quick. I just want to play this part for you so I, so we can remember in our memory. Listen to this. About charity streams and... Um, and... I don't like that. Why, Mike? Come on, tell A us. A real charity stream... Would be either somebody who doesn't stream often streaming just for the purpose of doing the charity stream or streaming on someone else's channel hopefully to in order to support that organization okay so let me get this straight bitch you're telling me that the in your mind the ideal way to promote a charity is to run a charity stream on a channel that nobody knows about that literally will not appear in the algorithm that nobody can find and will not be able to find in the future that is so stupid i can't even believe it, it is, that flies in the face of every single principle of promotion whatsoever how the fuck on earth are you 
ever going to be able to find that? How are your fans ever going to be able to find it? How are the people who are trying to donate to the charity going to find that? That is ridiculous. It is patently ridiculous. So let's talk about the other option. Uh, having another streamer host it? How does that make any sense? Then that streamer is doing self-promotion. So it's morally the same. What are you talking about? If you have another streamer do it, they're gaining the promotion. So now they're the person doing the thing according to your argument. That makes no sense. It's actually just so stupid. I can't even, I can't even, my brain is exploding from trying to process it. I don't know how anybody's brain works like this, except I do. It's called spite. It's called spite and emotional argumentation. Let's keep talking. Because the next take, which he talks about, is <laughs> this isn't a liberal stream <laughs> over here we do real things like donate to my subscriber count i guess like join my discord and twitter super leftist things like <laughs> buy my buy my tank my tank flavored bubble gum and support the revolution via mike from pa are you fucking kidding me? You've got to be fucking kidding me. How does how does any audience fall for this? This is like, what the fuck? <laughs> We're not a liberal stream. Over here, we do the exact thing that liberals do by collecting subs and self-promoting, but we just say that we don't do it. We lie to your face about it. <laughs> I'm such a genius. Am I... Am I losing it? Is this real? Are, do people actually follow for this? Do they fall for this? Unbelievable. And guess what? Then we get into the next take, which is that charity is liberal because it's about a power imbalance. And this is where we have a big, big thing to talk about, okay? Because this is the, this is the real meat and potatoes. And we're gonna steal man Mike's argument here. Okay. Oh, we're going to get to that too, MZT. Oh, we're going to get to that. Oh, we're going to get to that. Don't you worry. Okay. So the next argument is about the power imbalance. Okay. Can we stew man his argument? Yes. Let's stew it up. Okay. How does no one call Mike a grifter? Uh, because he'll ban you from his chat. So people do call him that. They just get banned immediately from his chat. Okay? Listen. Now, is charity liberal? Is it about exploiting power imbalances? Well, we already established previously that charity isn't just one type of thing. For example, if you give a sandwich to a friend, that is charity. If you give uh, five bucks to a homeless person, that is also charity. Now, if, if, if we're going to steel man his position, let's say that we're talking about philanthropy and the nonprofit industry, okay? We're going to steel man here. This is not, for the record, this is not the argument that Mike made. Mike is too stupid, clearly, to make this argument. But I am interested in teaching you, unlike Mike. So if you want to have a seat and learn something, we can talk about it now by straw manning his I mean, by steel manning his shitty position, okay? So let's pretend that we're talking about philanthropy and the uh, and the nonprofit industri industry, okay? Let's do that, okay? <clears throat> oh, cool. We got that, that tweet. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. That'll be funny. You know what we'll do? We'll do a little bonus at the end. Don't worry. We're going to do a little bonus at the end. It's going to be super good. It's going to be super good, okay? It's going to be super good. Watch. I'm going to show you. We're going to do a little bonus at the end. It'll be great, okay? So let's let's do this, okay? Is it true that there are charities that are bad? Yes. Actually, it's very true that there are charities that are bad. We have many such examples. In fact, there are churches are considered nonprofit charities, and we know how corrupt uh, churches can be. We know that the Komen, uh, Komen for the Cure is a litigious group that tries to sue other charities.
to put themselves first. We know, oh, there's all just so many charities that are just garbage. We just looked at the Trump charity, which is a literal scam, like a documented scam. Okay, so we know there are bad charities. And I think you could even go so far as to say that here in America, because we have a culture that says that is heavily religious, by the way, we have a culture that's heavily religious, that is constantly ideologically pushed to undercut social programs, that we have an over-reliance on charity. Our government, instead of actually solving problems, um, says, we'll leave it to the charities. We'll leave it to the churches. We'll leave it to the, to the nonprofits. And that is a massive mistake. Obviously, because as you can see, that's just basically shrugging your shoulders and hoping somebody else catches it. And because of the way the world works, people might not know about the problem or they might not have the resources to start a charity to fix whatever problem it is. So when you have a ideological bias against social programs, needed social programs, and charity or philanthropy more specifically, is the only alternative, as it turns out, that can create some very bad situations. A great example of this is how many nations are now reliant on the Bill Gates Foundation for help with research. The Bill Gates Foundation, a foundation that is run by a monopolist, by a hardcore capitalist, has manipulated its way into all kinds of patent control, into all kinds of advocacy. And yeah, they do some harm in my opinion. They probably do a little bit of good as well, but they do some real harm. In fact, we know, for example, that the Bill and Melinda Gates educational program, which was designed to promote charter schools, a private industry solution to public education, was disastrous. It was a disaster. Even Bill Gates and Melinda Gates had to admit that it was bad. It made education worse. They took people's charitable donations and made education worse. So we know that charities can be bad. And we know that an over-reliance on charity can be bad. But that does not mean that charity is bad. That's like saying, unironically, that breathing is bad because if you breathe underwater, you will die. Uh, breathing is bad. Don't fucking breathe ever. Because if you breathe underwater, you'll die. What a stupid argument, okay? But let's go further. Because I want to be as serious as I possibly can about this, okay? Charity, even within capitalism is not necessarily a bad thing. And nonprofits as structures are not necessarily bad. Now there's a lot of room for things to go wrong, okay? As we recognize, there are problems with transparency. The government doesn't actually have many rules when it comes to what determines a charitable structure. Hence why churches count as charitable structures, even though they have no transparency whatsoever even though they literally just take people's money and say, in the name of God, we take your money and we give it to, uh, to us. We know that can be bad. But even with all that in mind, there are lots of charities that do incredible work. And there will probably always, in fact, I know that there will always be room for charity foundations for organizations that have specialized knowledge who get together and and decide to solve a single problem for no profit just to fix the problem in fact i fucking love that i think that's cool as shit and as it turns out there's a lot of these charities that operate even under capitalism the pcrf being one of those And it's interesting because in this segment, we hear Mike go on a tirade. Let's hear. Let's see if I can find the exact part. Um, and so I'm not saying nobody should do charity streams or that charity streams are 100% toxic or anything like that. It's just when you come to this channel, this is not a liberal channel. We heard this one already. Okay. 
watch a lot of your liberals at. and charity is liberal charity puts the charity giver in a position of the person receiving the charity is not um it doesn't mean that all charity is bad or we should never um charity is liberal meaning charity equals bad american charities have collapsed the entire markets by flooding one product hey Oh, yeah, here's an example. They talk about this. And yes, this can be a problem. In fact, we know that there are examples of of philanthropy specifically. By the way, just so you know, you know, philanthropy being rich people giving money. Philanthropy is when like somebody rich goes around and gives lots of money. They do lots of charity. That's a, there's a difference between just charity and philanthropy. OK, and when he talks about philanthropists fucking things up, yes, they have. We just talked about it. We just talked about how Bill Gates has done that. And yes, they have collapsed markets in other countries by being fucking stupid. But guess what? Even if it was a leftist, imagine if it was a co-op that fucked everything up. Does that mean leftism is bad because a co-op fucked up? That's fucking stupid. That's fucking stupid. Okay? That's a fucking stupid argument. 80 as an example was flooded with rice to the point that their local agriculture collapsed. Um, and I know that being a power structure, helping change the narrative. Where's the fucking part? Um, I think that's true for some supported, for example, Chapo's like boys don't. I want to find the part where he says it. Eh, whatever. Fuck it. Enough, Mike. Enough actual Mike. Enough, Mike. Okay. Enough. At some point in this stupid fucking clip, this brain melting clip, Mike d speaks up and says, oh, but the financial advisor, all this shit, oh, they, they take a whole bunch. And that is true for some charities. But where did we go just a little bit ago, huh? Let's see, you know, let's, let's find out, shall we? You know, we just had this up on the screen, but I'm gonna refresh everybody's memory just in case. Just in case, you know, just in case, because uh, Mike, as it turns out, is talking out his ass. Because look, the administrative event, uh, expenses of this organization is 4.7. And actually, you know, this is the treat part that I said. Let's find out what charity the Chapo guys were giving to. Let's find out what charity they were giving to. Can we find that out? Which one were they going? Fundraiser for Palestine. Oh, this was on the 15th. What did they donate to? Ooh. Ooh. Can we find out who they donated to? Does anybody know? Does anybody know who they gave to? Did they give to the same charity? They gave to the same charity? Oh, Mike is so full of shit. They literally gave to the same charity. Oh, oh my God. How could this get any better? You can't ask for better than this. You can't ask for a stupider take. A, a take from somebody who clearly didn't even try. And what I'm saying is like, listen, everybody has bad takes from time to time, but this is a fractally bad take. This is such a shit ass take. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's like literally he didn't even think. Is this a he him moment? Oh, this is a he him moment. He probably donated to the same charity in the stream where he talks about oh, the financial people and the CEO take it. Bitch, no, they fucking don't. In fact, if you cared, if you cared, if you gave a shit about facts, if you gave a shit about reality, you would be able to scroll down here and you would be able to see, wow, Steve Sosaby gets 160,000 American dollars for running this charity that he's been running for 30 years and was the founder of. This is the same guy who founded the charity, still running it 30 years later. And he takes 160,000. Now, 160,000 is a comfortable amount. Let's be real. That's a comfortable amount of money, right? You can live very comfortably. But do you not think, do we not as leftists believe that a, that a guy who's literally saving the lives of children through his actions, through his organization, should be able to take a comfortable salary? Don't we think that's fair, even as leftists? I think it's fair. And guess what? 
even if you had a critique, even if you really wanted to say that's too much, that's a pretty minor critique. That's a pretty minor critique. Yeah, of course, you can go look at the chair, the salaries for other people. You could say, okay, they pay their CEO a little too much. Steve, maybe you're a little greedy or whatever. But come on. Come on. That would be a different critique. Yeah, I think Steve is a fucking pog. He's a good storyteller too. But that's not the critique that Mike made. That's what we're going to talk about next. But unfortunately, unfortunately, everyone, Mike wasn't done providing charity to the Demon Mama community. Okay? We've been overlooking the biggest problem. Okay? Because Mike... Oh, Mike. Mike has been giving us treasures all day. Maybe we shouldn't have been so mad. Maybe we shouldn't have been so hard on Mike. After all, he changed his mind and decided to give us something very nice to enjoy. Okay? Now, I will warn you in the name of fairness, because I'm not a slimy, lazy unintelligent, fake, wannabe journalist that this has not been 100% verified as of yet because it is very hard to do so, okay? But you can decide for yourself whether you want to give Mike charity in this particular circumstance or whether you not wanting to be a lib, don't want to engage in the act of charity towards Mike. Because I will say, I personally am not feeling particularly liberal right now. In fact, I'm feeling, feeling pretty leftist. I'm feeling super lefty right now. Oh, we'll talk about that afterwards, yeah. I'm feeling like a super lefty. Mike from PA, aka Central Committee on Twitch, told his Discord community to lie and report me for nudity and gore because I watched Demon Mama Real review Irrational Chad talk with him. Thanks for the, uh, thank you for the sub Destiny. Very, very appreciative of the subscription from Destiny. Appreciate it. Appreciate the love. Glad today the love is coming in even from from those who have had much conflict, okay? <laughs> Appreciate the dono the donation. Appreciate it. Okay? Let's continue though. All right. So, <laughs> I unpublished the vod so Twitch support can confirm it's false. Isn't that a TOH TOS for a Twitch partner? And here we have a screenshot. Now, I don't know if any of you know Ico and Freems, but Ico and Freems are Smaller streamers. I've had Ico on my channel. I've done some content with Freems. Both of them are very passionate streamers who dabble in politics. They both talk about politics quite frequently, but their streams are not the same as mine. They're very different. Freems has no reason and no, no motivation as, as far as I can tell whatsoever to lie about Mike from PA. Now, Ico and Mike have had a, a bit of a history, but let's just be completely real here. I covered this. You all remember when I covered this. This was the Mike from PA is a class reductionist video that I did months ago. And that video... <laughs> Thank you very much, Central Committee. Thank you. Appreciate the sub. Appreciate the sub from Central Committee. Um, speaking of which, I got to add the... Uh, real quick, before we go any further, I'm going to add my Twitch chat up here. Because I, I, I realized I forgot to add my Twitch chat. So I want to make sure I got Twitch chat open in case there's shenanigans going on in Twitch chat. <sighs> yeah, maybe we can watch it. I'm sure he's probably going to talk about similar things, but maybe we'll watch it. We'll take a look. Let's let's open up Twitch chat here. All right, Twitch chat's open. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Central Committee. Anyway, <clears throat> let's continue. Mm -mm. Um... So, Ico, like I said, Ico had a conflict with Mike from PA in which Mike from PA very strongly implied 
that he would, uh, how do I say this? Tell other people to disassociate with Ico if Ico didn't fall in line with his opinions. Now, I don't know if you know this about Mike, but Mike has done this many times. There are a laundry list of small streamers who have had Mike say, you wouldn't want to get in with the wrong crowd. I have a lot of powerful friends. He said this on stream. In Ico's original video, there is a clip of this. Ico provided that clip. So you can go watch that yourself if you want to or watch my video covering it at a later point. Just saying, to make sure that we get the the bias out of the way, that's the bias, quote unquote, that Ico has against Mike from PA, which is that Mike from PA has threatened her and her channel in the past. Oh, Mike bullied all kinds of people for not decrying uh, Bo the fifth column. In fact, Mike claimed the Surf's TV um, was a were supporters of human trafficking because they refused to denounce Bo the fifth column after Mike made a random video about it, which I also covered because you know I'm always on top of this shit. I don't bring you no motherfucking air puffed drama. I bring you the real deal with the real story and the real motherfucking receipts. Thank you very much, Mr. Braindead, for the gifted sub. Appreciate that. Hey, delete your VODs. This is Freem's warning Ico to delete the VODs. Mike said on May 18th, report Ico for doxing and harassment. Get all the mods to report her. Make sure to pick nudity or gore. That gets reviewed faster, but explain what happened in the report box. No, Dream Canoe, I am not the queen drama frog. I am not the queen drama frog. I am the lord. I am the vampire lady who presides over the flow of drama. Because, see, here's the thing. When I choose to talk about drama, I make sure it counts. I don't just waste everyone's time. I'm no frog. Lady dramatesque, indeed. Except I don't get I don't get died at the end. I don't get killed. That's pretty damning. That's pretty damning. Isn't it? That's pretty shitty. Kind of weird how Mike has burned every bridge with his bizarre accusations. Like literally saying that the surf supports human trafficking. So the top mod for Mike... Remember last night you told me to let you know if I get harassment from his community? How about this? Wow. Hey, Merrick weighed in. Someone tried to warn me that his community was doing this to me too. And this mod showed up and was incredibly rude and talked down to all of us and me for asking if this was happening. From the Twitch community guidelines, submitting large amounts of fictitious reports or encouraging others to do so will, in will lead to a suspension of your Twitch account. Hmm. Hmm. I've been good, Labor Kyle. We're having a good, we're having a fun one today. Hmm. How very strange. How very strange indeed. Mike may have once again found himself in a lot of trouble. You see, Mike is just the type of stupid, petty, short-sighted individual that couldn't realize that mass reporting other lefties because of personal disagreements is a fucking stupid idea that's going to hurt you more than anyone else and will also make you totally untrustworthy. Now, in the past, I've said something, and longtime viewers of Demon Mama will know, you all know I've said this, that I have, that there is a unspoken streamer's code. Yeah? It's not really unspoken. I've spoken it. But there is an unspoken streamer's code. And that unspoken streamer's code comes from a very real and labor-focused source, okay? We all work in an industry in which we are very precarious, okay? I've talked about this many, many times, right? So in this industry, all it takes is one bad string of reports and your channel could go down. And you could lose your entire living. You know, if I lost my YouTube channel today, I would be hurting. 
I would be in trouble. I would have bills that wouldn't get made, okay? All my money. We are in a very precarious position. We have very little legal protections. Streamers are all, I know a lot of people don't know this, but streamers are contractors. We don't, we don't have unions. We don't have employment deals. We are on a contract basis. Every time we turn on our, on our, on our TV, we, we implicitly sign a contract that sells that stream for broadcast that single time and nothing else. We get no other protections. If they want to get us off their platform, if they, if we get falsely reported, we're guaranteed nothing. We are gig workers. Now, some of us are gig workers who happen to make a lot of money, but that can evaporate overnight. If you think that even the richest streamers would be okay losing their money overnight, you're wrong. You don't actually know what, how, it, how, it, how expenses work. So something that's really interesting is that people, there are a lot, there are a lot of times where people um, get a job that pays them a lot. And I'm talking not even a gig job like ours, okay? They get a job that pays them a lot. And then something happens in their life and they lose that job. And all of a sudden, they go from having a $300,000 salary to being bankrupt or homeless within a year. As it turns out, if you when you when when you need to live somewhere, like say you got a tech job, when you have to live in a city like LA or San Francisco, your bills go up. And sure, it's all fine while you're making $300,000 a year. But if you lose your job because you got sick, because something happened, you're fucked. And your bills are going to eat up your savings like that. And you might not be able to get another job. And that's especially true for gig workers like streamers. I know that was a bit of a long ramble, but the streamers code, the unspoken streamers code is that you don't go... You don't do things that endanger someone's living unless you really, unless there's a real fucking good reason for it. And I mean a real fucking good reason for it. So somebody's a child rapist. That would be a good reason to go after somebody's income. Somebody is a Nazi. That would probably be a good reason, you know, advocating for genocide. But other than that, you don't do things that it that endanger people's income because they need that to live under capitalism and this is especially true for lefties because lefties are supposed to know about class especially people like mike who claim to be class reductionists and he doesn't even recognize that gig workers are a subclass and it's interesting to me that Mike has had so many small streamers, gig workers who aren't even making a living yet, speak out about how he threatens them. Yeah, Mike literally did, Labor Kyle, yes. No, for some people it isn't. You can go watch my video on it, Labor Kyle, I did a video on it. If you're, if you want, <sighs> let me give you an example of somebody violating the streamers code. Okay. Right wingers do this all the time. A great example of somebody violating the streamers code is when you show up on a panel and you say a slur that could get everyone demonetized or worse banned. So, you know, some of you are coming, some of you I know have come from hippy dippy have come over from Dylan's show. Remember the time when I hypocrite said the N-word multiple times on, on uh, Dylan, Dylan's stream? You know why that was such a big deal? It's not because like people are like, oh, the N-word, ee! It's because, I mean, that's bad. The N-word is bad. But it's because every single person who streamed that could have technically been reported and banned from the platform. Your life's work, gone in an instant. And unless you've actually looked at that in the face unless you've sat there and said holy shit this channel that i've been dumping 40 hours plus a week into realistically way more than that every streamer who's succeeding right now works their motherfucking ass off dylan works so much i work so much even if you're not a regular viewer of one of us i can guarantee you 
any of these streamers who streams regularly, they will be, you will see them on stream for eight hours at a time. Usually they're on camera for somewhere in the ballpark of 40 hours a week. I promise you that most of their life off stream is prepping for the time that they're on stream. So there's a reason why the streamers code exists and why people are very harsh, why other streamers are very harsh when someone else violates that streamer's code because it puts all of us in danger. It is very bad and it should be reserved for only the absolute worst and most justified cases. It is the, the, it is the death penalty of an online career to try and get somebody deplatformed. I've many, many times on this channel made, you wonder what the streamer's code is? The streamer's code is you don't do things that endanger other people's living. I, I said that. Yeah, it's basically you don't, it's not that you don't ever, ever speak out about somebody else. You can critique each other all the time, but don't do shit that, in, that endangers people's livings. Let me make a, uh, a comparison real quick, okay? I've said this many times that streaming is a lot like wrestling and it's not because it's fake. Some people will go, ah, streaming's like wrestling because ha, ah, stream wrestlers are extreme and and streamers are extreme. Ha! Ah, that's not why. Do you want to know why I compare streaming to wrestling? Because in wrestling, they're all contract workers who aren't paid well and who could accidentally kill each other very easily. And as a result, the performers who step into the ring have to be able to trust one another. They have to be able to go, you're not going to actually break my neck, are you? You're When we do this really complicated move and we're beating the actual shit out of each other, when you have a cobra, the, when you pull a cobra out of your pocket and you have it bite me, it's not going to kill me, right? The reason that there is, like, this exists is because neither, because interestingly, mutual aid, it is in the interest of both wrestlers to not snap each other's necks to be able to trust each other even if you're competing even if you are even if you hate each other's fucking guts it is in your self-interest and the interest of everyone to not break each other's necks because what's to stop it when you go to do a move when you go to slam get slammed through a table for the show and that person is careless or malicious and they kill you Oops. Well, guess what? Streamers are in a similar situation. Yeah, that actually happened. Unironically, the macho man Randy Savage was bit by a cobra, uh, King Cobra, a de a devenomed King Cobra in his fight with against Jake the Snake. Wild. Anyway. Well, we just talked about that list and we've, we've pivoted over into the second part. Mike ruthlessly violates the streamer's code. And like I said, nobody knows the word the streamer's code. I just call it that. But everybody knows the streamer's code. Everyone follows this. Any serious person in streaming knows that the streamer's code exists. It's a simple thing to conclude. Very, very easy to conclude. Oh, Wait a second, it's in our mutual interest to not constantly be trying to destroy each other's careers, even if we don't like each other. Even if we really want to go hard and critique everybody and say this and that. You don't go and you don't start harassment campaigns against other people, especially other lefties. Especially other lefties. But let's be real, against anyone. I don't do giant report campaigns even against right-wingers, except for the most vicious and disgusting of them. Like, I think that people who genuinely break the fuck out of the TOS, like Steven Crowder. I think St Steven Crowder is fair game for reports because that guy literally just breaks every rule and makes the platform worse for everyone. He's violating the streamer's code every single day. But other than that, you reserve breaking that code for the most emergency of situations. But Mike does this all the time. Mike threatens smaller streamers. Mike pushes his clout around. Mike tells people to, to report other people. And I don't respect that. And nobody who cares about streaming should respect that. 
and that's why I saved this part for last because this doesn't have to do with the conversation about charity. This doesn't have to do with anybody's politics. This has to do with whether you like streaming or not. Now me, I love streaming, okay? Streaming is my passion, seriously. Like I fucking love streaming. And I know you do too, because you're here watching a stream. Some of you have been watching my stream for two and a half hours and you watch Dylan's stream before that. It's pretty fucking cool, right? Streaming is pretty pog. Well, guess what? It's in your interest to support people who recognize that streaming is a precarious industry and that if you don't want streaming to be the worst ever, you shouldn't support people who are threatening the industry itself. And Mike is one of those people. Mike is one of those people. I'm sorry. It's just fucking true. In addition to being um, a... In addition to looking terrifying, in addition to having the greasiest hair I've ever seen of any human on the planet, in addition to being painfully unfunny, a massive LARPer, an obvious hypocrite who can't put together a single argument to save his life, I don't think that he could, I don't think that he could make an argument for why sugar is delicious, okay? But in my opinion, there is one issue that goes, that, that hangs over all of this. And that is that Mike is so spiteful, vindictive, and stupid that he can't even recognize while preaching about mutual aid that he doesn't act in the way of, in, in the, in the way of mutual aid. He does not behave in a way that, that is in, in line with the idea of mutual aid. And as a result, no streamer should trust him. No streamer on this entire platform should trust Mike from PA. Because that guy, if you don't do what he wants, will go for your career. That guy will tell his, ch his channel to go report you. This guy wants to see streamers like Ico. And by the way, look, a lot of respect for Ico, but Ico's a small streamer. Ico's a small streamer. Ico poses no risk to Mike from PA. Besides critiquing him, besides bruising his ego. Ico's a small channel. She does great, great streams that are real fun. A lot of people like him. I like Ico a lot. But Mike decided that Ico needs to have her her shot at making a living be destroyed and we don't know if he's going to succeed because we know people have succeeded in the past by the way you know that you know that the serfs i know a lot of people don't know this because this is ancient internet history but the serfs lost a channel to false report to, to false reports They lost their first YouTube channel to false reports forever. That's why the Surfs doesn't have the same account that they used to have on YouTube. Yes, they did. You can ask, you can ask Lance about it. Yeah, we'll play that. I'll look at that at some point. I did see that. That's so cool. Thank you very much for the for the tier one sub, Numi. Oh. So yeah, just wanted to, you know, just wanted to put that out there because um, I am so goddamn tired. Oh, I saw that Kyokor. I have that to be talked about later. We're going to talk about that at some point. It is very, very frustrating to me to see genuine genuine efforts to change the world and by the way vosh's charity stream did do that 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 uh that charity stream is going to make a positive change in the world barring like the bank like the bank like losing all of the money there is going to be a literal material change in the world now mike can sit there from the comfort of his fucking air-conditioned streaming room and say, eh, charity is dumb. 
with the worst argument I've ever fucking seen. But it was Vosh and Vosh's community, many of you who contributed, myself who contributed, who actually made a difference this week. Not Mike. 